In this video, I'm going to show you how to slice and 3D print using Bamboo Lab Studio. So first step is to open up your model in Onshape. Once you have your model open, go ahead and click down here on this bar, right click on Part Studio 1, or it could be named something different depending on your part. You're going to hit Export. Now go ahead and name your file, whatever you want to name it. Your format is going to be an STL. That's what we're going to use for 3D printing. And then make sure your units is in millimeter. Then go ahead and hit export. And that's going to go to your download. So now we need to open up Bamboo Studio, which should be on your desktop and should be a green icon like this. When you open up Bamboo Studio, you're going to see kind of the home page here. Go ahead and just click on prepare. And then the first thing you want to do before we load our model in is we want to select our printer. This is the most important step. So make sure you select your printer correctly. So we're going to be using the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini 0.4 nozzle. Make sure you have that printer selected. And then your plate type should be textured PEI plate. Now that we have our printer selected, we're going to go to File, Import, and then Import 3MF STL step. Those are all the different files that you could import into Bamboo. In our case, we're doing an STL. That's going to open up your file explorer. Go ahead and go to your downloads and find your file. Double click and it should open up in the slicer. So now that we have our model in our slicer, we want to orientate it the correct way. So to do that, we want to look at our model and figure out where it's going to need supports. So anywhere that there's overhangs, the 3D printer is going to have to lay supports down to be able to support that area. So obviously on this, we've got a big overhang here. So we're going to have to support that area. Well, what if we go ahead and rotate it? So I'm just going to make sure I'm clicked on my model. I'm going to have the toolbar at the top is going to be highlighted now. And I'm going to go to this rotate tool. Once I'm on my rotate tool, you're going to see a bunch of different arrows around the part. Those are all going to rotate it in a different axis. So let's start with rotating it this way here. So I can either drag it to where I want to rotate it, or I can actually type it in up here. I'm typing 270. Now we can see our part is standing up, so it no longer needs to support this but we do need to support this long rectangle here so to do that it's gonna to have to build support all the way up from the bottom and then overhang in here so instead of that what if we rotate it again this way so now you can see we won't have to go quite as far with supports we don't have to support this overhang and a circle like this it'll be able to bridge and won't need support so the other thing you can do on this toolbar is if you need to move your part around or let's say you have multiple parts you can click on multiple parts and move those around generally we'll stay kind of in the middle of the build plate um, and then spread out any other parts around it so the other tool up here that's very useful is we're gonna have scale so if you need to make this bigger or smaller in our case we're gonna leave it how it is and then we also have this lay on face so instead of using the rotate tool we can do lay on face it's gonna highlight all these different faces and then we can actually click on that face and you can see it moves how it lays so that's kind of a quick tool to get it to lay how you want um, other than that we won't dive too deep into some of these other settings those are a little bit more advanced and feel free to dive into those on your own time but once you have your part orientated how you like you're going to go over to this left hand side with our settings you're going to see this top drop down here and this is going to determine the quality of your print so typically we're just going to leave this on standard um, after you slice it and you get to see the time if you see okay that's going to take too long to print we can go in here and we can change it to draft or extra draft which is going to make it a little bit faster say it's a part that needs to be really strong we can try out their strength preset um, we can try out some of the higher quality settings if we need it to be higher quality but for now just worry about standard this top page all those are going to be set by default by our preset next is going to be the strength the only thing I really want you to worry about right now is the infill density so right now default let's put that at 15 percent once we slice it and it gives us our total time or and filament amount then maybe we'll change that depending on how we look so next we're gonna to to do support so if your part needs support which it might not 
then you're going to check this box and that's going to enable support. Go ahead on here, we've got normal and tree. Typically we're going to want tree because it's a little bit quicker, easier to get off, but if you your model has a big overhang and needs to be perfect, then you're going to switch that to normal. Last page, others here. Go ahead and disable this prime tower and you can leave everything else how it is. So now once we have our settings set up, we're going to come up to the right side here and hit slice plate. That's going to slice it, so this is going to show us how it's going to print it. So you can see we've got these supports in here now. And we can also see the total filament. So that's going to be 600 or let's see, 1.72 ounces. And we can also see the cost, so based on the amount of filaments, about $1.20. Then we can also see the total print time, so an hour 35. So let's say we want to get this print time a little bit quicker. We can go in here now and we can change our preset to draft. And go ahead and just hit use modified value. We can slice our plate again. And it's a little bit faster. So you can kind of go back and forth um, to weigh the pros and cons of which way you'd like to slice it. The other thing we notice is that it's supporting the circle and we don't really need it to support that circle. So we're going to go ahead and change this threshold angle. And you can see now it is no longer supporting that circle. So I just lowered the threshold angle because we know it's going to be able to print that, but we still are supporting this rectangle over here. So I'll go ahead and play with that threshold angle to determine what gets supported on your model. Once we are happy with all our settings, we've gone through, we're happy with the time, our filament requirements meet the assignment, then we can go ahead and export it to an SD card. So you're going to grab a micro SD card from the print room. They should be in the printer. Grab it from one that's not printing. Then go ahead, insert that into the computer, and go ahead and press this green drop down. You're going to hit export plate sliced file, and then click this button up here. Now when you do that, you go ahead and find your SD card on the left hand side, name it whatever you want, and hit save, and then you will be ready to print. So now take your micro SD card to the print room, get the filament loaded, and go ahead and print your file.